Hey everybody, this is Rishi Agarwal, and this video is going to be about community-acquired pneumonia and what that looks like on chest x-ray. So we, before we start, I just wanted to define two terms here. The first is consolidation, and consolidation just means an increased area of lung density that causes obscuration of the underlying lung architecture. So in this example over here, there's an area of increased opacity, and it is so dense that it obscures the underlying vessels, okay? Ground glass opacity is a bit different. It's an area of increased density of lung, but it's not so dense that it obscures the underlying vessels. So this is an area of ground glass opacity. Usually I use the term consolidation on chest x-rays, and if something is ground glass opacity on a chest x-ray, I'll typically use the term airspace disease or airspace opacity rather than ground glass opacity. Both of these terms can also be used in the setting of CT. So this is a consolidation on CT. Notice that you lose the underlying vessels and the bronchi. You do see some air bronchograms, whereas this is ground glass opacity. So there's an overall just increased density of the lung, but you still have the preservation of the lung architecture. So when we talk about pneumonia on radiology, there's three different morphologies that pneumonia can take on a chest radiograph. Lobar pneumonia, in which a whole lobe or a large part of a lobe is completely consolidated. Bronchopneumonia, in which a smaller area of lung shows consolidation or ground glass opacity, and it's usually patchy in distribution. And then interstitial pneumonia, in which you'll have relatively uniform, symmetric um, reticulation or linear opacity, and this can progress to consolidation. And there are prototypical etiologies or bugs that can cause each of these different patterns, but there's so much overlap among the three that it's not really useful to memorize what kind, what bug causes what kind of pneumonia. Except for this third category, interstitial pneumonia, because if you see an interstitial pneumonia pattern, then I usually bring up the possibility of mycoplasma or viral pneumonia, or if the patient is immunocompromised, then possibly PJP pneumonia. So when most people start out with radiology, they tend to think of pneumonia as looking like lobar pneumonia. But in fact, in real practice, most cases of pneumonia that you see coming in, in the co from the community are going to be bronchopneumonia. And then probably the second most are going to be the interstitial pneumonia. With lobar pneumonia, I, I don't see that very commonly um, from patients just out in the community coming into the emergency room or to their doctor's office. So here's one example of a patient with pneumonia. See if you can figure out where it is. So this is the patient after treatment. Notice that you lose the left heart border in this example. And so what I would say in this chest x-ray is that there's an area of increased airspace opacity in this area of lung that obscures the left heart border. And because I know the lingula abuts the left border of the heart, I would say it's left upper lobe pneumonia. Here's another example. So in this case, I would say that this patient has bilateral increased, rather symmetric interstitial opacities in both lungs and an area of consolidation in the left lower lobe in this retrocardiac area. Because it's bilateral and relatively symmetric with interstitial opacity, this is what I would call an interstitial pneumonia. And in addition, there's also a small left pleural effusion. And this patient was treated for pneumonia and this is what they look like afterwards. This one turned out to be a mycoplasma pneumonia, or walking pneumonia. Here's another case. See if you can figure out where the pneumonia is. So remember to look in the radiology blind spots. The radiology blind spots are behind the diaphragm, behind the hyla, and above the clavicles. So in this case, there is a pneumonia in the right lower lobe, and it's easy to miss on the frontal view if you're not looking behind the diaphragm. And on the lateral view, it shows up as a spine sign, so an area of the lower thoracic spine that gets denser as you go from superior to inferior. 
That's the spine sign. How about this one? So the pneumonia is right here. So notice that this person's left hilum is larger. It's a little bit more dense compared to the right. And this one turned out to be a left lower lobe pneumonia. How about this case? So there's actually two areas of pneumonia here. One in the left lower lobe, which you can see through the stomach bubble here and via the spine sign on the lateral view. And another one right here. And I think this is in the right middle lobe on the lateral view because I believe this is the minor fissure, although I'm not completely sure. This could also be in the right upper lobe. How about this case? So here we have obscuration of the left hemidiaphragm, and we have a consolidation that is in the retrocardiac region. Notice on the lateral view, we only see one hemidiaphragm well. And this one is the right hemidiaphragm because we can see it all the way anteriorly. So something is obscuring the left hemidiaphragm, and that is this left lower lobe consolidation. Sometimes pneumonias can be round, and they're no different from other community-acquired pneumonia, other than the fact that it, on a chest x-ray and even on CT, we can confuse these round pneumonias for lung cancers because they have a round appearance and they look like masses. But this one had a clinical history that supported a pneumonia, so we just followed it with CT, and it, you could see it got smaller on the follow-up. Okay, that was the last example. If anybody has any questions about this topic or other chest radiology topics, feel free to leave a comment below, or you can email me. My email address is rugrawal at nm.org. Thanks.